Okay. So this is all 32 NFL teams' uniforms ranked. So it's 2020. 2020. And so, of course, they change. You know, NFL uniforms change every year. This year, no exception by any means with seven NFL teams going to have new uniforms starting in 2020. But that's why it's important to name the actual time. But as of right now, 2020, these are all 32 teams, their uniforms ranked 32 to 1. And um, anything like this, of course, is just an opinion. And it's my opinion. And there are some biases. I'll get them out of the way. So I was born in 1991, which does factor in. The age, which uniforms I grew up with, factors in. And um, another thing that probably, I mean, that definitely factors in is my team bias. So I'm a Patriots fan. Um, so those biases probably factor into my my opinions. But nevertheless, here they are. So um, one thing I'll say is I, I feel like all of the current uniforms in the NFL right now can be broken down into four types. Four types of uniforms. So you have the 2000s uniforms. Uniforms that were made from like 2000 to 2009. Most of them are made by Reebok. Most of that time frame, Reebok was in charge of making all NFL jerseys and uniforms. And those types tend to be my favorites. It's probably an age thing. The way they use stripes. The way they use thin lines. Another type of uniform, I'd say, are the classics. So these are the ones that have been around forever. They're... They're not always as elaborate or as crazy as, you know, some more current ones. But they're the classic uniforms. They have the right amount of stripes. I'm talking like the Green Bay Packers, the Chicago Bears. Uniforms that when you see, you know right away exactly what they are. And that style of uniform would be another style. So another style after that would be... The 2000, the teens uniforms. So from 2010 to now, which all those uniforms would be made by Nike. And in general, I'm not so crazy about that style. I think a lot of those jerseys and uniforms can end up being kind of plain, just with the team's logo on the side, and they they use like. The material to try to do cool things like it's shiny in a certain place or something like that. But what you en when you end up getting is just a jersey that doesn't look that good to me, in my opinion. But some of them I do like, which we'll, we'll, we'll go through the list. And then the final style are throwbacks modernized. So these are uniforms where it's a classic, it's an old style uniform that's been brought back. But it's not brought back exactly the same. It's sort of a modern version of it. So in my opinion, all 32 NFL uniforms fit into one of these four categories. It's time for number 32. Number 32 for me is the Miami Dolphins. So these are definitely an example of the Nike 2000s jerseys that just end up being just too plain and not really doing it for me. The actual jerseys is just uh, uh, very, very plain. Nothing going on except for, you know, the, the whole shirt is one color. And then it has the patch on the side of the team's logo. And no stripes, nothing. And, and they just, I'm just not a big fan. The colors just doesn't, it's like kind of glows in a way. I don't really like it the way I liked the Dolphins uniforms when I was growing up. Had more going on. One thing I'll say is they're, they're alternate, which is basic, which is a throwback of their Merino era, the 80s, and really before that. Those I like. 
but I'm ranking the entire set and the home and the away are just so boring and frankly ugly to me that these are the worst jerseys in the NFL to me despite not hating the alternate but I think orange is one of my favorite colors it's probably my favorite color and so when they came out with the orange I liked that back then when they brought back the orange now as their color rush it's like a different shade of orange and it's all orange which I know is part of the color rush for it to be all something but it just comes out looking horrible like all the colors are like they hurt your eyes it just it's an eyesore to me so now we'll move on to number 31 to so number 31 we're gonna stay in Florida and it's the Jacksonville Jaguars and again kinda plain uh, maybe not quite as plain as the Dolphins but the stripes are so subtle um, and there's no logo on the sides I mean when you just look at this like just as a jersey for sale it's just not much going on and I think you know it's the second worst set um, I think um, the ones that came before this are probably my favorite Jaguars uniforms that they've ever done I like the different color on the sleeves it kind of reminds me of the era that I like they are even this one is the Jaguars they change their uniforms feels like every year but um the set before this even though they were Nike era they kind of feel like Reebok era to me but um I, I, I liked those the ones before that horrible and their very their original set is is okay. It's just, you know it's what you'd expect from a '90s jersey. Interesting font, different logo on the side than their main logo. But um, but on their current set, I am happy that they got rid of the um, the gradient helmet of their. That's probably the worst thing they've ever done is having the two colors on the helmet. As much as I like those uniforms for them. I hated that helmet. So I'm glad they got rid of that. But I feel like the actual uniforms to me are too plain. So now I'm going to move on to number 30. So number 30 is the Atlanta Falcons. And we haven't seen these uniforms in action yet. This is the first ones of our new ones. I don't like them. <laughs> um, one, the ones that came before this were would have been right up there they're one of my favorite they're in my era that 2000s the early 2000s era where they incorporate the logo the stripes on the pants are interesting it's not just like straight line that the sleeves it's just uh, colors and thin stripes I really really liked the Falcons uniforms that came before this and this current ones are just typical Nike era jerseys that end up being extremely plain other than the gradient where it, so if it's not plain it's hideous and just trying too hard to be different and the ATL the giant ATL I'm not a big fan of yeah, they're definitely different we'll see them in action so they definitely got worse in my opinion um, I do like the font of the numbers that I do like um, but the gradient is just so weird. It's just trying so hard to be different with the eight giant ATL in the front. The the gradient on the alternate. It's just very strange. But um, we'll move on. I'm going to go to number 29, which is the Las Vegas Raiders. So this one would be considered the classic era. The classic style. And of the classic ones, they are extremely, extremely plain. Especially the, the white. I mean, if you look at that jersey, just the white away, it, it could be anything. It looks like a practice jersey, basically. Just black and white and no logo, nothing. It's just the simplest, plainest thing. And when you see the jersey alone, especially, like I said, the, the white... You can't even tell it's a Raiders jersey. 
Like, there's no way to copyright it other than the NFL thing on the front. Like, people could just make Raiders jerseys and just... There's no style, there's no patterns, there's absolutely nothing, no logo. That being said, they are classic. They're not the last because you, when you see it as a full uniform, you know it's the Raiders. You, you, and it's been around and it's part of who they are. Now it's the third city for them. But, um, and then the silver pants I actually do like, especially certain versions of it. These uniforms have been around for so long that not every brand that makes it makes the silver pop as much. But when you get that shiny pop, like Reebok was like it was like a shiny silver. I really I I like that. I like that the way it, it looks with the pants and the whole thing. They're they're not last. And so now it's time for number. 28 for number 28 going back to the new uniforms that haven't actually been in action yet and that is the Los Angeles Rams and um, these uniforms are definitely different um, gradient on the numbers which have two gradients this year coming up and um, you know this especially the blue jersey with the white pants that I like a lot I think it's a nice they kept the old classic look with the blue jerseys and yellow pants and the ram on the helmet and they just modernized it it's the, like it's the second version of the LA Rams I actually like that uniform that one out of the three I it doesn't look good when it's all blue the all blue it just changes the whole thing for me it just doesn't look good in general, I'm usually not a big fan of all of anything. All white can look good, but all of a certain color I usually don't like. I think I really like the the blue with the yellow pants. I hate the bone. I don't know why they have to go out and not have a white jersey. They have to have their way is not white. It's bone. You know, so it's like an off white. It's like a grayer white. They don't end up having a white jersey. I think it looks terrible. I think it's like they changed like the the patterns on the side are different for that one. I think I don't, I don't know why they tried so hard to like just be so different, but I think they look ugly. I think it's stupid. I hate their bone white. The gradient on the numbers for the home, I you know I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean it's different. But it's kind of a subtle difference. It's not like the Falcons jersey where the whole jersey is a gradient. It's not like the it's not like the Jaguars old helmets where the helmet is a gradient. It's it's just just the numbers. I have a feeling like when you watch the game, it might it's going to be not as noticeable, and I think it may not be that bad. We'll see. And then there's a lot of talk about um, the weird patch. And people think it could be getting our eyes ready for advertisements. But then, you know, people will say that there's other teams that have patches on the side. But there's just something about, like, the shape of this patch that just, like, it just looks weird and, like, reminds people of an advertisement. Like, the Steelers patch on their jersey, like, because it's a circle, because it's their actual logo, and it fits with the jersey so well, it doesn't remind you of an advertisement. But, like, these patches, like, because they're, like, so squared and, like, don't fit in, they kind of feel like an advertisement. So, who, we'll have to see. Who knows? I hope not. <laughs> and then one knock, I mean, I think the, the set, again, this is a broken record, but the set that came before this was one of my favorites of all time. It's, it's the early 2000s. It's my favorite time period. And when it first came out, I think they looked so beautiful. As the years went on, they started messing around with the pants. They did an all blue. They did white with blue. They did blue jerseys with white pants. That, and it started looking as ugly, ugly. But um, when they first came out and they only used silver pants, I mean, sorry, gold pants, I loved those uniforms. They're up there as one of my favorite all-time uniforms. These... Rams uniforms with the silver pants. 
the 2000s. Love them. Love the, the colors, the way they go together. I love the sleeves. And the sleeves have stripes. And then there's a stripe going down the side. I, I loved these uniforms. And, um, and then, of course, they were one of the vampire teams, which I hate. But yeah, when Nike, when in 2012, when Nike first took over the jerseys from Reebok, the NFL contract, a lot of teams did this weird fly wire collar thing and ended up, the collar ended up looking like vampire teeth. And about, in 2012, probably, I don't know the exact number, somewhere between 12 and 10 NFL teams had the vampire collar, and I hated that, and they slowly... I think we're finally done with them. I think every single team got rid of them. But anybody who was part of the vampire thing, gross. And I'm glad that's gone. But we'll move on. We will move on to number to number 27. And number 27 is the New Orleans Saints. So the New Orleans Saints, they're somewhere on the verge of classic, but they're not a great classic. Um, they don't have like those stripes. They're 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 on the plainer side for sure. Really, they if you just just the jerseys with, without the rest of the uniform, it's all just solid color with the logos on the side. Um, their color rush is decent. Their color rush would fit in that other category, which is. Um, a modern throwback, so it's not exactly like um, the one it, it's showing, but it's like a modern version of it, of a throwback. And I think um, back in the day, the Archie Manning days, the Saints jerseys looked a little better when they had the the stripes going on on the sleeves there. Like uh, I think it, they look best home and away with the gold pants of their current set. I like it better, which I think they've sort of gone away from. Uh, in most games last year, the Saints were either all black or all white, and I like it much much better when they wear their gold pants. That's my favorite set, which I think they still do. I just don't think they do it quite as much as they used to. I'm upset about that. <laughs> I wish they did. It's funny, they had a, an, a, a gold jersey back in the, um, the early 2000s as an alternate. That ended up not looking good. I love the gold pants, but the gold jersey, that didn't end up looking good. And this, the Saints were also one of the vampire teams. And on a jersey that's as plain as theirs... The vampire really, really stood out on them when they had it. Those were hideous. But luckily, like everybody else, they've moved away from the vampire. So now we'll move on to number 26. And number 26 is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So they are um, one of the teams with new uniforms this year. But unlike the other ones, we have basically seen them. So I think what technically these uniforms would fit in the category of um, a modern throwback because, well, they're not classic. Um, and they're not exactly the same. They, they pretty much are, but technically the helmet is different because it's, it's a different Bucks logo. And it's like a, a, a much larger Bucks logo than it was when they originally wore these uniforms. But um, but basically, for all intents and purposes, they're back to what they had in the 2000s and, and the ones they won the Super Bowl in and so on. And, you know, these uniforms aren't amazing, but they're certainly better. The ones they had before, which I call the clock, the digital clock uniforms, because the numbers ended up looking like the numbers you see on a digital clock. Um... Those were horrible all the way around. I just they were an eyesore, an absolute eyesore. Um, and I'm glad those are gone. Those are some of the worst of all the the teams getting new uniforms this year. A lot of them, you I would say, their new uniforms are worse than what they're replacing. But I wouldn't say that about the Buccaneers. These uniforms are better. They have upgraded 
coming into 2020. The alternate is strange, the gray or like brownish gray, and that's actually their number one selling jersey um, among their fans. They're buying the gray. So I guess the fans like it, and that is completely new because originally they didn't have that one. When, when they had these basically the same uniforms before, but they didn't have the gray. And so, you know, these are okay. They're pretty plain, but, you know, logo on the side, blah, blah, blah. But um, one thing that makes them pop a little for me is the numbers have two outlines, so it's white and then orange and then black. It's not two. That, that kind of helps it pop. There's certainly an improvement over the digital clock uniforms. And then uh, their classic would be their creamsicle uniforms which I'd say these are better than those too because that was just like such an ugly color <laughs> the color is hard on the eyes but anyways let's move on to number 25 so number 25 is the Philly Eagles so they as far as when they were made they fit in the era that I like um, but they're kind of on the plainer side for that era um, they're, they're, they're similar to the Bucks, really. They're, um, the logo on the side, not really stripes. Um, their number font is definitely, it's good, and it's, it's theirs, you know it, even if it's subconsciously, you know the Philly number font when you see it. And that's, that's kind of what puts it ahead, is the unique numbers, which... As long as they're not too unique, like the stupid clock Buccaneers ones. And in, in my in my favorite era in the two thousands, I think the uniforms they all all most of them had a unique number font. That when you see that, even if you saw it outside the jersey, like even if you wrote your name in Eagles number font or Patriots number font or Texans number font, you would know that it was that font. And Yet at the same time, they're not too unique like the Buccaneers ones. So that I do, the Eagles get points with me for that, and you know they've had these for a long time now, and um, and you know they're decent. Uh, I think they look a lot sharper with Nike um, instead of Reebok. The colors, I don't, uh, everything sort of. I think it's because of the lack of mesh because. The Nike, I mean, the Reebok jerseys had a lot more mesh than these Nikes do, and I think in a lot of cases it ends up the exact same jersey in Nike and Reebok um, can look better in Nike than it did in Reebok because of the way the jersey is made. So I don't want to knock Nike as far as the actual jerseys. It's just some of their designs. Like when Nike designs the jersey, sometimes it goes pretty, pretty bad. But manufacturing the jerseys, like, is not always so bad. So we can move on to number 24. So number 24 is the Tennessee Titans. So speaking of Nike, these are Nike um, era. This definitely fits in the uh, teens Nike era. But these ones are really, they're pretty good for that era. Um, they're pretty good in general. I, I like the sides. I, it feels like the bottom of the Texans logo. Same, it has a font. I think these jerseys would fit in with the era that I like. They have a font that's recognizable. They have stripes in, in different places. Um, I really like them. They got the three colors. I like them better than what they're replacing, I think. Um, although those were okay, too. But yeah, I think I, I just throw the, the top like that. I, I like these better. Those are the Titans. And that's number 24. Number 23 is the New York Jets. Sticking with, this, with the Nike teens jersey. When these first came out last year and they did their unveiling, I absolutely hated them. But the, seeing them in action, seeing them in the games, 
they didn't look that bad. They grew on me watching them play. I hate the Jets because I am a Patriots fan. But um, these uniforms aren't too bad. Really tough to say if they're an improvement or not. I, I'm going to say no, not an improvement. I think the, the set that came before this, which would definitely fit in the modern throwback, because these are they had the Namath in the 60s, and they went away from it to to do more green, less stripes, and then they came back to these in the 2000s or late 90s into the 2000s. So I'd say that jersey is better, but um, but these aren't that much worse. I think that they're good. Um, I don't like really the the New York in front. It reminds me of the Cleveland. I think that this era, this Nike era, they like to do that, like they did with Cleveland and here with New York. That I don't like, but it, just watching them in action, especially the all white. That it looks pretty good when when they play. The there's there's stripes and they're they're good looking stripes and I, I like these. So now it's time for number twenty two, and again we're looking at a Nike and we're looking at a, a teens jersey, the Detroit Lions, and. I think I definitely like these. Um, not the not the color rush, which is the case for a lot of things. Some of the color rushes look really, really bad, especially to me, because I am not a fan of all one color, and that's really what the color rush does. But certain goofy colors, like we saw with the dolphins, this is kind of right there. Like it looks terrible. But the home and the away look good. Um, and I'd say it's an improvement. Even though the ones that came before would be the 2000s era that I like, I think these just look better. I like the silver numbers on the, the blue jersey better than the white. I think it ends up looking a lot better. And I they incorporated more silver and less white than they did on the jerseys that came before this. And then I think the sides, they look pretty, they look really good. With the three stripes, the word lions in it. I really like these. Definitely. So now we'll move on to number 21. And these, I guess I would say, fit in the classic category. I haven't found too much differences, if any, with, with previous Browns jerseys. They really just went back. I mean, I guess one difference is there's no AL. But I think they got rid of that a long time ago. They had the Al Lerner on the side but yeah these browns jerseys to me look like the ones that they've always had it looks like they admitted that that was a mistake and they just went back to to what they had so yeah number 21 is the cleveland browns and um the jerseys the the nike they just look terrible and they admitted that last year when they switched <laughs> To making their color rush jersey their new home because the color rush jersey was so different from that set and it was more to what people are used to and it's just a good looking jersey i mean those two colors it just it's a good looking jersey and that's one thing about this set that upsets me is they the color rush jersey did really well people liked it that's why who partly with the home being so bad, but then also that the color rush looks so good is the reason why they made it their home last year, because it's a good jersey. And they could have easily included the color rush as the alternate for this set, which is basically what they did. They just made a plainer version of it, probably because they wanted to have three new jerseys. There's no reason why their alternate shouldn't be their color rush, other than the fact that it's not a new jersey, so people aren't going to buy it and... Which I think is annoying because cause it looks so much better. Like this plain version of their color rush is hideous. It doesn't fit in their set. It, I, uh, I think if if their color rush was the alternate for this set, it would be perfect. Because it fits in with the rest of the set. It's like a different look, but still fits in. And it's probably the best, which I kind of like alternates to be the best. But now their alternate is without a doubt their worst. It's just so plain. It just 
makes you wish they had, you know, the color rush. Like, why take away the stripes? There's no reason to take them away other than to make it a new jersey. But, I mean, you know, these are classic. These are fine. I mean, they're, they're definitely better. They are the Browns. These are the Browns, so they might as well have these jerseys. They're not great. Like, if you're going to compare them to other classics, I mean, I'm just not... These aren't the greatest-looking colors. But, at the end of the day, these are what the Browns should be wearing. And they are. So now we'll move on to number 20. And number 20 is the Buffalo Bills. Um, and the Buffalo Bills definitely fit in to that, that modern throwback. So their uniforms look very, very similar to an old throwback that they wore, the O.J. Simpson days, basically the original AFL days, except they have the current Bill's logo and sort of the modern touches. And I like these. They end up looking good. They look classic. They have simple stripes in simple places. The pants look good. I especially like the blue jersey with white. I'm not a big fan of the all blue. I'm not a big fan of the all red for the color rush. I feel like if this had white pants, it would be amazing. It would be beautiful. But they wear it with red pants and it's gross. The pants would make such a big difference. But either way, as in general, the set is good. The all-white looks good. I think the white pants look amazing with the three stripes and the Bills logo on the side there. It's good-looking pants. Goes with the helmet. It makes the uniform all fit together. It's a very nice set. And um, it's, it, it's pretty good. Um, the ones before it were my favorite era. That 2000s. And they're definitely good examples of what I like about those jerseys, which is stripes um, on the side, stripes going down the side of the jersey, stripes in all different places. I like a pants. Like, if you look at their white, it's almost like a stripe that goes down, connects from the jersey to the pants. I love that. Um, so it's tough for me to say. I mean, it's it's they've had these the current ones for a long time, but whenever they changed, whichever year that was, wasn't an improvement. It's actually tough for me to answer that question. But um, I definitely like the way the red helmet looks better. Although this particular uniform that they have now wouldn't look good with a red helmet, but just you just look at the helmets alone. I think the red helmet looks better. I guess I'd say it's not an improvement, but but either way, they're nice. That's why they sit in at 20, which is a decent spot. And then the Jim Kelly era ones, those, those are, they're classic, but they're really, they're on the plainer side. So now we move on to number 19. And speaking of classic, these are definitely on the classic side, the lower end of the classic side, but classic, it's the Washington Redskins. So these uniforms, definitely, kind of like I said with the Browns, they're solid. I like the stripes. I like um, the way they look. I like the helmet stripe thing, although that's supposedly actually a disadvantage. When you have a stripe on the helmet like that, the people can see which way the quarterback's looking easier. So if you're a safety or a linebacker, it makes your job just a tiny bit easier that they have that stripe going down the center that you can see. It's easier for you to tell which direction the quarterback's looking. So supposedly that's a competitive disadvantage, but it sure as heck looks good. And it looks good on the Washington one. I, I like the way these uniforms look. Like I said, they are the Washington Redskins. That being said, as classics go, they're not, you know, that great. The colors, they're kind of, you know, I'm just the burgundy and yellow. They're higher than, you know, lots of current jerseys. But as the classics go, they're not one of my favorites, just ranking it against other classics. But they're definitely classic, and I like them. Um, they've had different things going on in the past, like, for some reason why Robert Griffin was there, they wore yellow pants, home and away, which didn't look as good, but for some reason it just, I feel like Robert Griffin. Like, if I ever saw a picture of Robert Griffin in the regular Redskins, it'd probably look weird to me, like, 
It's like they had this rookie quarterback, the second overall pick, and then they like a slight alteration to their uniform just for him. I mean, it kind of fit at the time, and they were good that year. They made the playoffs. I'm I'm glad that they dropped that, but it kind of fit. Like I'm 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 actually kind of happy they did that for the the couple years he was good. But um, that's them, and then of course they have the old Boston Redskins throwbacks, which they wear every now and then. But those were the uniforms they were when they were the Boston Redskins. Um, anyways, and Washington, too. They kept them in both. So next is number 18. And that is the Pittsburgh Steelers. So these fit into the classics. They have made changes over the years, which is, one, adding the patch. So if you go back and look at the 70s Steel Curtain, the Steelers, the Dynasty, Bradshaw, Mean Joe Green... Those uniforms aren't the exact same as they are now. So one difference is now they have the patch, the Steelers patch on the right in the front of the jersey. And then another thing that is um, changed is the font. The font they use now is more thin. It doesn't have as many serifs, and it's sort of almost italic, like sort of slanted a bit. And I kind of I like the font. I, I think that this change is, is better, like, it fits, like, when you see this font, if you've seen your name written in this font off of a Steelers uniform, you would feel like that's the Steelers. So I kind of like the change, um, I mean, the change happened a long, long time ago, I couldn't tell you when, I think, late 90s, maybe, or even mid-90s, but, um, whenever they did make that change, I'd say it's an improvement, just change things up without going away from the classic. Um, which actually, finally, either the year before last, they brought back... I didn't even notice it until I made this video. It went over my head, but they brought back the... Um, the, the, the Dynasty, the Steel Curtain-style uniforms as a throwback. And they sell it. And they wear them, you know, as an alternate. So I, do, I like that, too. Um, I like that they did that. So we will move on. And we're going to move on to my number 17th. And that is another classic. The Kansas City Chiefs. So the Chiefs are definitely in that classic era. They've pretty much always had these uniforms. And they're very similar to a lot of the classic ones as far as there's no logo on the jersey. Um, the stripes aren't crazy, but they're there. And you know it's the Chiefs when you see it. And that's that's what these are. Um, and they've had them forever, basically. When they were the Dallas Texans... Like their first year or their first couple of years, the uniforms were a tiny bit different. They didn't have, I don't think they had the yellow outline, they didn't have any stripes. But even those were similar to very close to what they have now. Um, but yeah, so as classics go, this is sort of middle of the pack. Um, a lot of the classic jerseys look pretty similar with the stripes uh, in the way they are in the same place. It's just basically that team's color. These colors are, are, are pretty nice. The red really stands out. You know this is the Chiefs. And, and I like these. These are classics. So we'll move on to number 16. And number 16 for me is the Indianapolis Colts. So these are a team that, that got New Jersey's this year, 2020. It's a very slight change. It's a change in the font. But it's a change nonetheless. And so, when they first made this change, my thoughts were, they have this classic jersey, they have this, um, this jersey that we've, they've had since they were the Baltimore Colts. These jerseys are so iconic and so, like, attributed with them, that even when they moved, they kept them the exact same. This is, when you see the Colts, when you see that horseshoe, the horseshoe, this is what you expect their jersey to look like. And then... This year, they changed the font to, like, a, a weirder font with, like, more serifs and more kind of, like, horsey font. 
I'm just like, I don't know, you know, why do you gotta mess with something that's so classic, you know, like, it's like a classic jersey, and now you're giving it, not a futuristic font, but like a new font. And then I went to make this video, and I realized that this actually isn't a new font, it's an old font, that, that somewhere down the line, years and years ago, the Colts changed back in the day, the NFL before the merger and stuff, this was their font. This was the old Baltimore Colts font. And somewhere down the line, they chored, they changed to a plainer, just more football, regular font. And so what they did now, this year, is change back. So knowing that, I kind of like it. It's like they're changing back to make their jerseys even more of a classic, even more... Um, even more what they're supposed to be. And w w I don't think watching them play, it's going to be that noticeable. It's more just, you know, analyzing the jerseys. Maybe it, it's noticeable on certain numbers, but in general, if you're watching a Colts game, and you probably wouldn't even know that they had new uniforms. I guess even the helmet is changed. The logo is, like, slightly shaped differently. And that's tough to notice, too. But that is the Colts. So now we will move on to number 15. And number 15 is the Dallas Cowboys. So that is definitely the classic category. And they are a lot like other classics, except one thing that's cool about them is they insist on wearing white at home. Which teams have gone in and out. Like, I remember there was a time where the Dolphins were doing that. There was a time when the Redskins were doing that. But for the Cowboys... It's not a fad. It is what they do. They wear white at home. And it's become part of who they are, which, as a result, you don't really see their blue that much. But um, their white, their classic white, has really been the same going back as far back the 60s. Pretty sure it's the same as their first season. But um, the... The away, the blue, has actually changed a little bit. Um, it's a, become a darker blue. And it has the cowboy star on it. So back in the, the older days, it was more of a, not a dark blue, but just a regular blue. And it didn't have any logo on it. It was basically just an away for their home. It, they, they fit together better then than they do now. Um, but um, I do, I really like... I like their, their uniforms. Um, I like like their sort of bluish silver pants that they have with the white, with the home. Um, it's funny, the, their pants for their away are silver as well, but it's like a different, it's more of a regular silver from the bluish silver. I like the blue silver. It's just, it's just a cowboy's color, you know. I just, it's just the cowboys. You know it when you see it. And... And that's them. I mean, their uniforms actually, because there's no logo on the side, it could be considered plain when you just see it. But as a uniform with those pants and the helmet and the stripe on the helmet, it just goes together so well. And it's just the Dallas Cowboys. I miss um, well, the Thanksgiving uniforms that they used to have. But now their um, they're color rush, their alternate are kind of based on their old Thanksgiving uniforms, just without the white helmet. Um, but they're cool because the sleeves are different colored, which is something I always like. So now we will move on to number 14, which is the San Francisco 49ers. So I'd have to call them their... A modern version of a throwback. Although they are really, really close to the throwback. Um, but they are definitely good looking uniforms. I love um, the colors and just the pants and jersey go so well. Like when you see that gold and that red, those are the 49ers. You know, this, the, so their uniforms now are based on their 80s dynasty. Um, sometime in the late 2000s, like maybe around, or it might have even been 2010, 
somewhere around 2010, they switched from what they had had for a while, their 90s Steve Youngy jerseys, to a, um, definitely a modern version of the classic. So the Joe Montana era jerseys, but the stripes on them were sort of modernized. They were like at an angle and depending on the player's choice of, of jersey, it would depend on the stripes, how many there were. But the stripes were like sort of at an angle. Um, and part of the stripe like cut off at the, at the bottom of the sleeve. And then at a certain point they nixed that and went to just regular. So now after they got rid of those modern stripes on the sleeve, the uniforms they have now are even closer to the Montana era uniforms. And I, I like them. I think those Montana, the gold pants, it looks so good. Um, there may have been a couple times where I said silver when I meant gold. But yeah, the gold pants, um, they, look, they look really good. And then their color rush is, again, based on a throwback, but it's one that they didn't wear for very long at all. It's a 90s, like 94 and 95, they had these uniforms that had, kind of like the Patriots 90s uniforms, uh, numbers that have like a shadow outline at an angle, which you have the red number with the black outline, in the black outline is thick and angled, and that, it looks good, I like it. They didn't wear it for long. They won a Super Bowl wearing those type of uniforms. I mean, they won their Super Bowl in the red, not the white. But still, it was that set. And um, they look... I, I think they, they look pretty good. Um, it, it, it's a good fit together. It's a good alternate. I'm, I wouldn't want their regular way to be like that. But I think it's a good alternate. So I think they have a lot going on right now. It's a good one. So now we will move on to another team um, having new uniforms this year. So we are moving on to number 13, and that is the Los Angeles Chargers. And so um, I think I always like Chargers uniforms. I think everybody loves their powder blue. I r remember Chris Berman always raving about them when I was a kid when, when it was their throwback. And actually, I think that throwback is the best. I think every version of the powder blue has actually gotten worse since then. But still good. Still good for sure. Um, I think these Chargers uniforms, they look good. I, I like them. The current set, these brand new uniforms, they look good. I think they look worse than the ones they're replacing. I still the Change is necessary because it's a new team, a new stadium, new city, all that. So I'm glad that they changed. But I think they look a little bit worse. I think, I mean, of course, the ones they're replacing are the era that I like. But I think, well, their current jerseys have just bolts, like with nothing around them. So it's, they're plain jerseys with bolts on them. Bolts on the pants and bolts on the sleeves, on the shoulders. Um, the bolts on their set original were accompanied by stripes. So they weren't just bolts on the jersey. They were within a stripe. And I feel like those looked better. But these are still nice. They still look really nice. My favorite, I think, yeah, is definitely the powder blue with the white pants. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't really like the powder blue with the yellow pants. Those yellow pants are kind of like too loud. It takes over. And then their alternate... They have two alternates. One is like a really dark, almost black. I think they're based on like... I think they're based on the Dan Fouts when they had a darker blue. Or even... They had a dark blue even when I was growing up. Um, and then they have ones that are basically based on their color rush. Which is just like a regular royal blue. Which those are probably my least favorite in the set. But, you know, they're, they're good uniforms. They're decent uniforms, so... I'd say they're worse than the ones they're replacing, but they're still good. One thing I like is the numbers on the helmets. And it was necessary for them to have new uniforms. So now it's time for number 12. 
and that is going to be the Baltimore Colts. So they are from the era that I like, but they're kind of on the downer side of the era. They're they're pretty plain, other than the font. That's one. That's a plus for them. Is the font is um is one of those recognizable fonts where you would know it's the Ravens font if you wrote you know cheeseburgers in that font, put it on a piece of paper, you would know that that's the Baltimore Ravens font. And that I do like about them. Another thing I like about them is that crescent. It's it's cool. It's an alt. It's a secondary logo for them. But it gets a prime use on their jersey. And it incorporates their state flag, which they're really proud about. And I think their jerseys look good when they don't do all of the same color. Maybe all white I like, but when they do... Like when they wear the black... I think it looks way better with white pants than black pants. Certainly the purple pants, those are hideous. I think that maybe last year or the year before was the first year they started wearing purple pants. And the purple pants, to me, they are disgusting. They, Whether it's with the white or the black. Or, I don't think I've ever seen them wear all purple with the home. Of course, their alternate is all purple. Their color rush is all purple. But that's a different story. The gold numbers. It's, the pants... The, alone aren't that bad like the stripe and the logo on the pants looks good but just the purple doesn't do it for me and the all purple i'm not a big fan of but i like their regular home with white pants and i like their black with white pants because uh, i like the font and then i like the contrast having basically if you look down you have three different logos you have their main logo on their helmet their secondary logo on um, the shoulder, and then a B, they have another logo on their pants. And I just think, I like them. I mean, there's not like any cool stripes going down the side of the jersey or anything like that, which I, which would make me like it even more, which would get it even higher on this list. But because of all the different logos and the recognizable font and the way their colors go together well, it's it's doing pretty high. So now number 11. The last one outside of the top ten. This is my favorite era jersey. The the 2000s Reebok era jerseys. These are the Carolina Panthers. And so they um, are very much like um, the ones I like. They have cool stripes on the shoulders with two different colors. Um, they have the logo on the jersey. They have a cool helmet with um, with a stripe on the top. Um, and, um, the stripe doesn't go all the way through, which I think is cool. It, like, separates and, um, doesn't end. I, I, I like these uniforms. They're, they're way up here. They're just outside the top ten. They, when they first announced the Carolina Panthers, they had these uniforms on display that they never actually wore, as far as I can tell. Which, these are funny. These look terrible. These look horrible. That... That blue with the silver uh, numbers, that's horrible. I'm glad they never wore them. <laughs> but um, those that's number 11. And so now, time for the top 10. And so we'll, the, the top 10 jerseys, top 10 uniform sets in the NFL. Start us off here with a real classic, Chicago Bears. Definition of classic. And this is definitely, you know these are the Bears jerseys. Um, they got the dark blue, the orange, George Hallis, which of course wasn't always there when he was alive. It didn't say George Hallis, but it makes its perfect sense that it says it now. It, it's a nice addition. And there have been the Bears jerseys going back for many years. I mean, they're not, the Bears have run around so long that they actually have had other jerseys, but they've had these since before the 80s I did find uh, a plainer one here with Dick Buckus but um, but even if you go back to Gale, even as far back as Gale Sayers they have the same exact jersey and uniforms that they have now which is really cool and then the orange I like I think um, orange is is one of my favorite colors so I always like an orange it's just a good alternate that it's just completely different um, not ugly, because it would be ugly if it was all orange, but no, but it has the white pants. It looks good. It's exactly the way an alternate should be, like a new, 
um, basically your third or your secondary color in your jersey. Jersey is the same except it's your secondary color. That's that's a good alternate. They don't wear it that much. They went years without wearing it. I'm pretty sure, but it is it's a good alternate. And the throwback they wore last year is interesting. It's fine. Uh, I don't really have too much to say about it, but that's how old the Bears are that they've had this uniform for probably about 50 years, but they still have alternate. I mean, they still have old ones that they wore before this. So now we will move on to number nine, staying in the classic style. We are moving on, and number nine is the Green Bay Packers. Definitely, of course, these are the Green Bay Packers. Everybody, these colors, these stripes, this helmet, this is the Green Bay Packers. While I was making this video, I realized that they've gone back and forth a couple times with the amount of stripes on the side. So they either do three um, yellow and two white, are two yellow and one white and their current one is the two yellow one white which I think looks better but actually the original dynasty the original um, Vince Lombardi era Packers had the three yellow so that's where they won all those NFL championships and that's where they won the first two Super Bowls and then at some point down the line, they switched. In fact, they actually had not long but a couple years where they had the the G logo on there, which ends up looking terrible and completely ruins the classicness of the Packers jersey. Glad that didn't last long. And then they moved to a two. And they didn't win. They didn't win. And then Favre moved to a three in like about 95 and then they went on a tear where Favre won three MVPs in a row they went to one Super Bowl lost one and then they changed back to two and they stopped winning again until they won with Rodgers so the recent one with Rodgers is the only one they've ever worn with one with the two stripes but I think that kind of thing is irrelevant but either way I think the two stripes looks better but the three stripes is classic it's what they've had their success in and what seems like it's older so it's more classic to have the three stripes um, and then of course even the ones I've shown they had different jerseys because like the Bears they are extremely extremely old so they've had other jerseys even other than this but now we will move on to number eight and to number eight we are sticking with my favorite style my favorite era, and that is 90s, sorry, that is 2000s Reebok, and this is, these are beautiful to me. I love the stripes, I love the way the pants, it just, their uniforms feel like a logo, like if you, if someone showed you the team's logo and just said, make me a uniform for this logo, that has to be how these were made. Like, it has the stripes... And the colors, the way they run, it is just like a version of their logo put into a uniform. Um, and I really like them. And then I love whites that have colored sleeves and shoulders like these do. I like jerseys that have like thin lines, like those black trimmings going down the side. I love that. These uniforms are great. And then as far as the black jersey goes... Um, it definitely, to me, it's a it's a solid alternate. Uh, they, it's tough for them to have an alternate because they really only use two colors. But the black is, you know, for teams that don't have a, a third color, they usually use black. And that's what they did here. And it looks way better than their color rush. For two reasons. One is the all black kind of ruins it. And then I think the red numbers sort of ruin it too. So I like their alternate much more than their color rush. And Kyler Murray was recently saying that the Cardinals are in desperate need of uniform change. But I disagree. This is my favorite um, style and era of uniforms. And I think if they do something new, it's going to be like the Falcons. Like, plain with a mixture of trying to be different. And it's going to end up looking gross. But anyways, the Cardinals... 
um, before this had pretty plain classic uniforms, but they've been, you know, such an old franchise in so many different cities, but I think they pretty much always had this relatively plain jersey that I'm surprised they changed it, because this Cardinals should have been considered a classic, unchangeable jersey, but at the same time, it's just kind of plain, and with the red, it almost looks like most teams practice jersey for their quarterbacks, which is probably partly why they changed it, like, if you're walking down the street wearing this Cardinals jersey... <laughs> It's like you're wearing a, a team's practice quarterback jersey. So maybe that's why they said, I know this has been our thing forever, but, you know, we got to change it just so we have people know it's ours. So let's take, because they changed these when they technically changed the logo. They made the bird look more meaner. They made those eyes scowl more. And then when they did that, it might have been 07 or sometime like that, they also changed the uniforms. And I really like them. I think they hit them out of the park. We will move on to number seven. And for number seven, believe it or not, we are in the 2000 teens Nike era. And we have the Minnesota Vikings. But as Nikes go, I really like these. Um, I like the way the stripes on the side. One, what well, has a font that's recognizable. or It's going to be. I mean... It's not as old, but it's definitely a unique font, but not too unique like the Clock Buccaneers. And it has nice stripes on the side and that they go up. Like if you look at the back of the jersey, the stripes like sort of raise. And then I think the pants go really, really well with the jersey. Uh, the ones they had before it were my era. But they weren't really like the best of my era. I mean, just something about the purple... It looks just so much smoother now and so much better now. I really, really like these. This might be the only time that I would say that it's an improvement when a team went from Reebok to Nike. From Nike to Reebok, rather. But yeah, I would call this an improvement. I really like these. And then the Color Rush is a good alternate. Because again, I think a good uh, color, a good alternate would would be use your third color, or use your extra color, and make the jersey. Well, if they did that, it would be yellow, and so and that would be hideous. Just so what they did instead of changing the whole jersey to yellow, they just changed the white parts to yellow. So it's a subtle change, but it's different. And this is it's perfect. It's just a nice difference. It's the way an alternate should be. Um, back in the day, their Purple People Eaters jerseys were pretty classic. And the set they had in the 90s, I, I, they're an example. Probably in my entire life, I've never seen jerseys where the home and the away were so different. Um, they're like, I don't know how it happened, but they're like completely mismatched. Like where the stripes are and what they are. They, their home and their away in the 90s are just so different. But... Either way, their current set is way up there for me. So now we will move on to number six. Just outside the top five are the New York Giants. And so, of course, their home is pretty plain, especially just the jersey. But it fits in the classic category. Um, this is what they had back in the Y.A. Tittle days. But for me, it's their away. Uh, I mean, of course, at the end of the day, this whole thing is just like opinions. And I can't even, it's hard for me to articulate or even understand why, but for some reason, I just think this away uniform looks so good. I don't know why. Part of it's the jersey, the way it goes with the pants. It's hard for me to articulate or even understand why I like this so much, but I just do. The gray pants, the stripes on the pants, the stripes on the sleeve, and then even the New York Giants thing in front. And then, yes, and they're classic, too. So this is also what White said at war. So they both go classic together. The Giants went away from this look for a while, but they came back to it in the 2000s. So in, in the 80s, they had a different look. It's when they first moved to New Jersey, they changed from what they always had in New York. They changed their logo from NY to Giants. Because they didn't change their name. They were still going to be called the New York Giants, but they sort of downplayed the whole New York thing. That people were pretty upset in New York that they left, and a lot of their most of a lot of their fans was like a Jersey Pride thing. 
So in the 80s, they kind of they changed their uniforms and they changed their helmet. And they had a lot of success in this uniform. Everybody knows Lawrence Taylor in these uniforms, and they're fine. And that's where their current color rush slash alternate comes in, which is based off these. Again, it's, it's a modern version of a throwback. It's not a throwback because it's not exactly what they wore because it has that NY in the front, which they didn't have when they actually wore them. But it's based on the 80s jerseys. And um, I loved the red, too. For some, I think that's it's a good. It was a perfect um, alternate, just a different color. It actually goes better with their away. Like that would make more sense for the red to be their home, and that goes better with their away. But of course, they never do that because the Giants is big blue. So I I liked, and then it's weird, but I really liked the red jersey with the blue helmet too. For some reason, I just liked that. But um. They don't wear that. They haven't worn that in years. But I liked it when that was their alternate. But their alternate now is the white based on the 80s jersey, which is also very nice. So, yeah, they're way up there for me. And so next we have the top five. And I, at the beginning of this, I warned you that I have biases. And there's a good chance that the Patriots... Um, are this high because of biases. But they are the last of our teams here that have new jerseys coming into this year. And even unbiasedly, I will say that it's definitely um, not an improvement. The uniforms that they had before this were much, much better. And they were my favorite uniforms of all time. For all NFL teams, pretty much in all sports. The uniforms that they're replacing, the 2000... New England Patriots uniforms are, the, in my opinion, the best uniforms in the history of sports. And everything about, I mean, it's biased, because I like the Patriots, and I like this era of uniforms. But they have everything I want. They have the stripes, they have an interesting font, the font that you recognize with the team, they have the logo, they don't have all of anything. The white jersey has blue pants, the blue jersey has silver pants, they're, they're great colors, the navy blue, the silver, with little hints of red. I love these uniforms. You know, I'm not necessarily upset that they're changing, because they're not, like, considered classic. So it's not like they couldn't change them. I mean, it's fine that they changed them. I, and I, I didn't expect the new ones to be better. So I'm not upset, but um, I definitely think that it's, it's, you know, it's not an improvement. It's a downgrade. But, you know, maybe it was probably time. Um, but um, I do... Um, the new ones, one thing I really do like about them is... Well, actually, I'll start with what I don't like about them. So one thing I don't like is a lot of the things that I loved about the new ones are gone. So actually, the font is gone. The new ones have a, a more boring kind of a regular jersey font they got, they're not going to have. So a lot of people think that if you don't look close enough, you would think that um, the new home is just the Color Rush. But technically it's not. So it doesn't have the same pants as the Color Rush. In the Color Rush pants, the white stripe was huge. And it had two small red stripes next to it. But now the stripes are all three the same size. It's still two red stripes with a white stripe in the middle. But the three stripes are all the same size now. And then another thing they changed is the font. So, the Color Rush had the same font as the Patriots' Home and Away from the 2000s. But this one is not. So, it's technically they have... This new home jersey is not the Color Rush. It's very close to it, but it's not it. And, so yeah, those are knocks. The first one is a knock that the font is boring. Um, oh yeah, another thing I don't like about the jerseys is that the, the way the stripes are, just having two stripes, I mean three stripes on the shoulders like that, is done so much. I, I heard somebody call it the UCLA stripe. So the name for that kind of stripe is called the UCLA stripe. And there's lots and lots of teams in college and the pros that have slash in the past or the present have done this. Even uh, more than I have here. And so it's less unique. It's not that unique that they have their jersey like this. So that's a knock that it's not as unique. The numbers aren't as unique, and then the fact that there's 
the stripes, it's not as unique. Um, but but well, some things I do like about it. So one is this pattern, the way these stripes are, with the two red with the white in the middle all being the same size. Because that is on the jersey and on the pants, it's sort of become like the Patriots thing. Like, they use it in backgrounds and on merchandise. Like, it's almost like an extra symbol for the Patriots. Like, even if you don't see the Patriots logo, when you see this stripe, you like, oh, that's the Patriots. So I kind of like, I do like that. I like that, like, these stripes means the Patriots. And other than bias, that's one thing I like about them is that the stripes go together. So that's why they're so high. Like a combination of biasism and liking the way the pants and these stripes go together. The stripes on the pants and the stripes on the uniform go together. So that's why they're so high, but I definitely think they're worse than the ones before. And then, you know, there's a lot of like for the 90s uniforms for the Pats. I think, you know, they're definitely different. They're, they're so 90s, they like belong in the 90s. The Pats should never, and I don't think they would ever, bring these back as current uniforms. Like, these jerseys belong in the 90s. What these, these are, uh, they make sense to have this as a solution to the helmet problem. So basically, you know, there's a rule that a team's helmet has to be the same color, which is why they stopped wearing their classic red jerseys. The, the old Patriots from the 80s and 70s jerseys that everybody recognizes as the classic Patriots jerseys. A lot of people I talk to, you know, being here in New England, say these are the best uniforms of all time, blah, blah, blah. They, they, they make a good throwback. They make a good alternate. And they would actually make a really good alternate for this set. But with the way the rules are, they can't wear them right now because it's a white helmet. They'd have to wear them with a silver helmet, which would be gross. So a good solution to that problem would be having the 90s jerseys as an alternate. But definitely as an alternate that they don't wear that often. I think having them, they belong in the 90s for sure. And so another, another one last positive thing about my favorite jerseys of all time is they kept the Patriots in the same uniform for a long time. The Patriots have never, other than the 20 years they had in these jerseys, have never gone too long without making changes. And if you look at their history, even within the red jerseys, like a lot of people think that they wore the same red jersey for years, but they really never wore it for more than like eight years in a row at most without changing something about where the stripes were or what color was in which place. The Pats are always, historically, always, always making changes to their uniforms in some way. So these jerseys kept them in the same uniforms for 20 years. And their alternate, their original alternate for that set, the silver, if, uh, I said that the blue and white were my favorite uniform set of all time. And if I had to actually pick my favorite actual jersey, and it would be that silver. I, I, I just love it for some reason. Um, it's exactly what an alternate should be, which is like the third color made in the set, but just use the third color, and it just ends up looking so nice. Um, it goes so good with the blue pants. My only knock on it is it's sometimes tough to tell if they're in the silver or the white because it's so close. But I like it, especially it, in certain shots where you can see the shininess of it. I love that uniform. So now we will move on to number four. And number four for me is the Houston Texans. So this is, of course, my favorite um, style. They're actually very similar to the Patriots, really. Only thing they're missing is stripes on the side but and the logo on the shoulders. But the stripes are pretty similar on the shoulders. They have their own font. The font is like sort of based on the logo. Like certain numbers you can kind of see like horns coming off the font. Like on the end of the four there. It's cool. It's again, this is a font that if you wrote something random in it, you would know that this is the Texans font. I like their colors. Dark blue, red. I think it's an amazing alternate, especially when they wear it with white pants. Hate it when they do all red. Hate it when they do it with blue pants. Love it with white pants. Their color rush is, I don't like really. I think it it looks better with the white numbers. Not a big fan of the color rush. But the uniforms in general, I do like. I like the home. 
the away and then the color rush. I mean, sorry, the alternate. And I think they're good jerseys. I like the little the Texans logo on the back above the the Cardinals have that too. Um, I like that. That's a nice touch. And they've had these their entire existence. And and they're way they're they're really really good for me. I love them. Partly because of probably how close they are to my favorite Pats ones, but then also the red. That they, they, they it's a really nice set. The three uniforms. The color rush doesn't really fit in with to me. But we will move on to number three. So number three is the exception. These Nikes are so so cool. Everything about them. So the Seattle Seahawks are number three. They have four different jerseys when you include the the neon green. That's probably my least favorite, but they're they're all great. They have a gray, the white, and the blue. I like it best when the pants and the I like it best when their pants and jersey are different colors. I think that ends up looking real good. So I like the white with the blue pants, or the blue with the white pants, silver with blue pants. Or, um, if they do have to wear the neon, it looks way better with blue pants than it does with the neon pants. But these jerseys are so cool. With this, the stripes going across the bottom of the shoulders. And then the font, like I always say about fonts. And then, when I was saying about that, the Patriots pattern, it has its own pattern. That weird, like, whatever that is, like, footsteps of birds pattern going down the side of the pants and also going around the collar these end up looking so cool you can see trace marks of their logo sort of the different the same shapes that are in their bird end up being on this uniform basically if you take things i like about other uniforms and put them all in the one that's what these end up being these are great they're way 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 up there i, I love these definitely the best that nike's ever created so now we will move on to number three. I mean, sorry, number two. Number two is the Cincinnati Bengals. So, so the Bengals, probably my love of orange factors in, but definitely the tiger patterns on the pants and on the shoulders. I just think it looks so good. Definitely remind me of Frosted Flakes. And like Frosted Flakes, these jerseys are more than good. They're great. And um, this, they're de they are from my favorite era, and it shows because they have a font that's unique and interesting, um, but not too crazy. And then it, they have stripes going down the side of the jersey. They have stripes on the shoulders. It has the helmet goes well with it. If you go from helmet to jersey to pants, they are the Bengals, and. They are dressed like tigers without it looking like a ridiculous costume. I just, I think it's amazing. I love these uniforms. Unfortunately, they were vampire um, culprits, but other than when they did that, which they got rid of, don't have that. These are, um, these are good ones. Perfect alternate. Their orange is exactly what an alternate should be. Their, their uniform just in their third color or their second color. They go together so well. They do the all black sometimes. It's probably my least favorite, but it doesn't look horrible. And then their color rush, I like the idea. The bangle, white bangle tiger. It's a funny idea. They end up not looking as good. The stripes, just, just basically, it's the same uniform, but all, all white and black. Take away the orange. It doesn't end up looking as good. But it's an interest, It's a funny idea. The ones before them were are boring. They struck the tigerness on the shoulders, but but the stripe the stripes themselves just didn't look anywhere near as good as they do now. They seem like more like realistic and tigery now. They're great, and then it, it's really funny if you go back way back in their history when they first started because of Paul Brown. They basically just copied Brown's jerseys because you know. Paul Brown created the Browns. He got ran out of town and fired as their coach. And so when he created a new team, he's like, I'm going to do it in the same state with the same initials, CB, and the exact same uniforms, because these are my uniforms. 
And so then they had the same uniforms except it had the word bangle on the helmet instead of completely blank. Which is, um... Which was really funny. And then one, after the merger, they had about five years where they kept these uniforms and the bangles and browns would actually play each other. And it's like, who's who? It's pretty funny stuff. But, um, so yeah, that's number two. So now you should know who number one is by process of elimination, but just in case... Number one is the Denver Broncos. So I think these were actually founded in the 90s. But I think all um, all of my 2000 era Reeboks were based on these. Or basically this is like what started it. Like the Beatles and then all the bands after them were trying to be. I think this is like the Beatles of my favorite style uniform. I love... The Broncos uniforms. If I had this, my favorite part about them is definitely the way the jersey and the pants connect like it's one piece. That stripe just goes down and curls up. I like the colors. I like, um, like I said, that stripe. The helmet is cool because it has a stripe on it that just that expands. It starts as a tiny stripe and then by the end it's like a fatter thing at the back of the helmet they definitely have a font its own font that's recognizable but my favorite part is definitely how the, the the pants and the jersey connect and then when you look at just the jersey they're definitely not plain at all they have stripes on the the sides and the front they're like a perfect example of how a jersey doesn't need to have the logo on it to be recognizable and to be known and certain point down the line, they decided to switch from red, from orange being their alternate to being their main, just to go back to history, because traditionally they had always had orange jerseys, and those are fine too. Those look great too. I think orange was the perfect al alternate, but now that it's their main, blue is a really good alternate. Their uniforms that they their their color rush is definitely a modern throwback. It's not exactly like their old ones were, but it's based off it, and those are fine. They're, they're historic jerseys. They're classic um, with the D and the horse inside. You know, those look good. They're, they're not horrible, and it's a good it's part of their tradition. I, I, I think it's, it's a good set to include that. It's like the Pats with their red throwback. Like, just throw it in every now and then for history. Has a nice little alternate in addition to the alternate they already have, which is the blue. These, in my opinion, are the best uniforms in football right now. And so thanks for watching my video, if you did. And if you didn't, that's alright too. Um, I'm just an idiot with an opinion, just like everybody else.